Hello here, I'm taking a very early look at what's due to come out in Beaver Builder version 2.5, which as I'm recording this at the beginning of March 2021 is only in alpha version 1, so things are likely to change before the final release. It is available now to download from your Beaver Builder accounts, but you wouldn't want to put this on any live sites as it is right now. Everything that is contained in this update is quite a surprise to me. I had heard a few rumors about some perhaps bigger things that Beaver Builder are working on. This is a fairly modest update, but it does contain a number of things that I personally am pleased to see and I know other people have requested. And before I take myself off camera, I should just quickly say that I'm David Wormsey. I make client websites and try and share what I've learned along the way. And if you're a Beaver Builder user, then perhaps consider clicking on the red subscribe button below. Anyway, let's get started. If you're on one of the Beaver Builder premium packs, then version 2.5 has some great additions to the menu module. We have styling options for our submenu links as well as our responsive toggle. And we have a new option to have a logo at the center of our menu. This is something that was always available in the Beaver Builder theme, but if you don't use that or you like to replace your theme header with the page builder, perhaps you're using Beaver Themer. The only way to create this effect before was to generate two separate menus and then place in the middle of those a photo module and then you would have all of the responsive settings to take care of. We also have the new option to be able to add search to our menu and as you can see this is clickable so it will work on mobiles. If you were using the Beaver Builder theme before you could add this using a short code but it's nice that this is available for all and it's got some basic styling. There is a separate module that deals with search which has a lot more functionality functionality but I think it's nice that this is included in the one unit also we have support for showing WooCommerce cot contents dynamically in the menu as you can see here let's take a look at the module itself and if we go into our general tab we'll see the new additions here on our centered and inline logo we can add our logo and as this uses javascript to predict where to place the logo based on the number of menu items you have it's not going to always get that right because there's going to be odd numbers and there are going to be some menu items that are going to be longer than others so you can place this left or right of the menu item i think left was right in this case we can also change out our search icon and that is true as well when it comes to the WooCommerce cart and what I've set this to is items count and total amount but I can change this to one or the other of these this is fairly basic stuff and I think that's right for this one menu module if you do require more there is a great add-on pack called WooPack for Beaver Builder and WooCommerce and it adds a lot more functionality. So if you want a mini cart that does something like this where you can see the individual items, you can delete them from here, you can go straight to the checkout, then you might want to check out something like this. But I think this is perfect for this simple use. If you had something as complex as WooPack, then this would be fairly bloated as a menu module, I think. Okay, let's move on to the next item, which Beaver Builder have called Outline Pane. I think I've heard this referred to as Page Navigator. Maybe some other words are used for it as well. This is something that's going into core, so it's going to be available to Beaver Builder Lite. And I think I need to come out of preview here so we can see this in action. Well, I say in action, I'm recording this as we're in alpha version one. So it's not all connected up. As you can see, it's fine in different areas, but if I click on these, it's not gonna take me to that area in the page. And the plan is for you to be able to move around these items. So you could rearrange your page from this one pane. This is something that I didn't request, something that I didn't feel I particularly needed. So if you are one of the people who requested it, please go and take a look at some of the later alpha versions to see that it's working the way that you want it. This is something that is also included now in Gutenberg. So I, I guess most people think that this is something that the everyday user could work with. I'm not so sure about this. So I did ask whether it would be possible to disable it and that will be a possibility in the future. So I'm not sure what I'm gonna do with this, but I would just encourage other people. I know it's been requested a lot. So if you're one of those people who've been looking forward to this, then please do check it out and see that it's gonna work the way you expect. 
Okay, let's move on to the next one, which is duplicate posts. So any post types, we can duplicate post pages and templates built with Beaver Builder from the WordPress admin. And to a degree, this is an extra bit of functionality, but it's also solving a problem. There's a lot of duplicate post plugins out there which will blindly add themselves to any place that they can duplicate content. But when it comes to page builders with Beaver Builder, it needs to generate its own unique ID for CSS and JavaScript. And if it doesn't do that, it can create some problems. So largely, this is about solving that problem. Of course, it's something that's going into core, so it's going to be available for Beaver Builder light users. Let me just show you this from the back end. If I go over here, I'm in pages. If I go to the home page, you can see here it's been added. And to signify that it's Beaver Builder, it's got this little green dot over here, but you can see I've got another one of these duplicate post plugins in and it's there. So it could cause some confusion with some. I mean, the nice thing is that the Beaver Builder one is only placing itself where Beaver Builder is used. And there are maybe some cases where you might need to use a separate plugin because you are literally duplicating some posts which don't have Beaver Builder on it. But Possibly the way around that would be to use Assistant by Beaver Builder, which has this option in that if you haven't checked that out. Okay, let me move on to the next one. These are just some basic updates to the content and post slider. On the post slider, we now have typography options. And here on the content slider, we have the ability to have an overlay color. So this is a black and white picture of a beaver and I've added in this blue with a bit of opacity over the top. I don't think I need to show you that. The next big update, again for pro users, is the pricing table. It's, I'm going to need to go back into preview mode so we can see it functioning. But we have a price switcher, which on this version at the moment is just going from monthly to yearly. We also have a ribbon, which we can place on any of our tables. We have the ability for each of our list of items to be able to put an icon alongside of these and change those out and change the colors. And we also have these tool tips. So this is still work in progress. I've put forward a suggestion that they keep this open so we can move this to weekly and daily. I don't know if that's going to be possible and that we can change the text in areas like here so we could highlight perhaps discount amounts and those kind of things. They, on this first version here, these colors for the tooltip and the individual icons are connected, but they're going to be disconnected so you can independently style these. If you are a user of the light version of Beaver Builder, I did start something on my Beaver Junction plugin offering all of these things. So there is a switcher. I have got tooltips on another version and a way of doing this, but it's all really done with code. There is a template there. I haven't done a video on it yet, but if you feel a little bit comfortable with code and you need all of this functionality, this template might get you started with a similar thing. But I'm very pleased to see this is included in the default price table. Okay, let's move on to the next thing. Next one is probably only for those people who are really big on SEO. There's some extra schema that's been added to the video and you can find out more information on schema.org. And finally, we have six last ones to go through. Small updates really here. We now have the ability to set the width on an individual single column. I never noticed this was not available before. So I guess someone's worked out a situation where they might need to have that. We also have basic support for the Font Awesome official plugin on the repository. Here it is. Now, I don't know what the support is at the moment. The documentation will be sure to come out for Beaver Builder and I will understand more. But this plugin allows you to run the latest version of Font Awesome and I think it also allows you to create the SVG versions of those fonts as well. So I'm not sure what the integration is quite on that. We also have this ability to disable the smooth scrolling that happens. Now I've set this up. So there's documentation on this and you can actually change the scrolling. But there we are, that's smooth scrolling. And we create that by putting an ID on our button or any item here. And then let me come into editing where we want it to land. We can 
put in my ID there to match it. But if I want to stop that smooth scrolling now, I can just take that FL no scroll, place it in my destination class, and then it's just going to jump straight to it. And I can see where that's going to be needed. There are certain circumstances on a page where you don't want smooth scrolling to happen. You just want to go straight to it. But there is documentation on all of that stuff. Okay, the final three points here are really more debugging things. There's a new mode that's been added so you can disable the history temporary. So if someone's having a problem, I guess support come up against this a lot. Someone's having an issue on their page, but it's been saving revisions for years it's probably going to be overloaded with those. This is a way of being able to temporarily hide those to see what the issue may be. That's how I understand this. There's the automatic ability to clear CSS and JavaScript files when a URL has changed, but that's not something that's created to be an issue. And something I don't understand here is that in debug mode, only output errors if show errors parameter is in the URL. I'm sure that means something to someone. And, and really, that brings me to the end. If you want to get involved Involved in some conversation obviously you can give feedback through support but there is also on the beaver builder community there is a post here so you can contribute and ask some questions over there anyway i think that brings me to the end of the video thank you very much for your time today i hope this was useful if it was then please give me a thumbs up and consider subscribing to the channel thank you very much bye bye